All right, so let's just jump right into it here. So what I have here is a uh, website that I'm working on for a free course. And so I just wanted to explore this database with you guys and just kind of show you what kind of a real world uh, website database looks like. Um, and we're gonna go over kind of what the tables contain and just kind of what to expect inside of here. And the ultimate goal is to make it so you can better understand what's in here, kind of pull back the curtains a little bit so it's a little less scary to work with because when I first started with WordPress, I didn't wanna to touch the database, you know, at all. <laughs> it, I, it's just not something that I was uh, comfortable with, but now I am regularly running scripts inside of here, just understanding how the data is stored and connected to, one, uh, to other pieces of data in here. And I feel much more comfortable uh, manipulating it. And that's gonna be a really good skill to have when working with WordPress. So there are tables in here that don't exist on the default installation of WordPress, and I'll make sure to point those out. Um, and this is meant to be super high level, so don't expect me to go into super detail. I'm gonna leave that for another, um, another video. So the first one we're gonna take a look at here is uh, WP Posts. This is a default WordPress table. And as the name implies, it, it just deals with all of the posts in WordPress. And pretty much everything in WordPress is a post on some level. Um, it sure feels like anyway, but this is gonna be like um, images, um, like it, that, that, or like attachments, I think is a better word to say, use. Um, it's gonna have uh, posts, custom post types, all that kind of stuff is going to be living inside of here. That even includes like revisions, um, those are a type of post. Like, I mean, I guess we could kind of look over here towards the back and look at the post types. Um, ACF fields are, are a post type, attachments, custom post types, menu items, revisions, um, and even things like submissions, which is another custom post type that I have for this. Um, but so there's gonna be a lot of things that don't quite match up to what you would think a normal blog post has inside of here. But the important things is that you just kind of understand what lives in this kind of top row. Those are the columns. And those are gonna be the things that um, categorizes information inside of this table. So uh, for example, we have the post title and that's gonna be the different uh, titles for each post. And so we can have things like, uh, let's see here. Let's reorganize this a little bit. So we have my custom post type that's uh, different types of floor plans. And so they're all uh, names of people. And so you'll have the post title for that. Uh, the post excerpt is the excerpt. So when you do, use, do in PHP, when you uh, write out in PHP the underscore excerpt, you're just going to get what lives inside of this uh, row. And if um, there's nothing in here, it'll generate one. Um, then you also have things like the status of the post on what uh, the uh, um, if it's published or if it's draft or or any or private or anything like that. This is where it's going to uh, show that and store that. So when you you know try and visit a page that's drafted, it'll kick you out in 404. Um, things like when your post was modified, you have the URL URL friendly slug here as the post name. And then uh, you have the GUID, the post type, and just a couple other random pieces of information, like if it's an attachment, what's the MIME type, or if it has comments, what are the what's the comment count, etc. So this is a uh, one you'll probably want to familiarize yourself with a little bit. Uh, so like the post content is another one you'll probably want to pay attention to as well inside of here because this has everything that the content would have. So the underscore content in PHP will simply come in here, uh, grab it, run it through its filters, and then and then uh, pop it out to you. Um, and so in this case, this is an ACF field and it has a, uh, uh, looks like a serialized array here that um, looks like it's got all the information about one of my floor plans. Um, or wait, is that a... Oh, this, that's one of the ACF fields, I'm sorry. So that's uh, one of the ACF fields. Uh, but it, you know, you can store uh, JSON in here, you can store serialized arrays and strings, you can have, or just like straight up HTML, like here's one of the blog posts that has, you know, an H3 and some uh, lorem ipsum, an unordered list with some list items. And so that's just gonna be a thing that you can simply just edit and you can start feeling comfortable editing this. So if you wanted to change the uh, 
uh, H3 here from an H3 to an H2, you can you can absolutely do that and resave it. I'm not gonna do that, but yeah, you could absolutely manipulate the information in here, but it's gonna bypass all of the things that WordPress would normally do to it, like it, it versus editing it with, you know, inside of the content in WordPress, changing the H3 to H2 and hitting save, that triggers a bunch of things in WordPress, whereas just doing this bypasses that completely. And then on to uh, post meta. So post meta is information about the posts that exist inside of WP posts. So if you notice here, then we have all of these IDs. Those are uh, unique identifiers for all of the posts. So every blog post that you have has a unique ID. And then that is then uh, matched up over here inside of this column on uh, in under the post ID column. So you can find the post ID, you can sort everything. Let's just say oh, the, ID, the post ID is 12 here and then just filter it just so you can kind of get a good idea of what, what we've got. And so this is a, uh, um, I think this is the home page or something like that. I can't remember exactly what this is, but it has all of the different uh, meta fields that exist for this. And meta fields are just key value pairs um, that are stored in the database and are assigned to a specific post. And so what we see here is that I have a, an ACF field called S1 heading, section one heading, and it says find your perfect floor plan. And it also has the ACF field that's associated with that. And that is sp specific to um, advanced custom fields. But that is something that, you know, when you do get post meta or update post meta, all it's doing is coming in here and either uh, grabbing it for you or updating it for you. Whereas you could just easily come in here and edit it yourself. Um, if you needed to. And this is something that you'll also want to be familiar with because I find myself editing post meta quite a bit. Um, whether that needs running scripts to change certain meta fields or anything like that, or um, grabbing them in mass um, to, uh, to uh, group posts or something like that. But this is also something that you'll want to uh, um, be familiar with. Uh, there's also things that uh, are default to WordPress, like the page template and the edit lock and edit last. So this, these are some uh, default things, but pretty much the rest of this is all ACF. So that's uh, something that uh, um, you'll want to make sure that you can uh, differentiate between. Um, on top of that, we also have another table here called WP options. And I kind of just like to think of this as like stuff that's shared across the site. Uh, doesn't mean that it's actually used on every single page, but that's something that um, is not specific to a post. It's not specific to a page or a custom post type or an attachment or anything like that. It is for everything. And so what this has is just all the information that you would see inside of the settings page. And it also has things that are typically used by plugins, um, just kind of like plugin settings. Um, there's also things that are uh, transients. So if you have, um, are, have, you're storing data inside of here, you're gonna see uh, transients. Um, we can see these down here at the very bottom. So we have site transients, um, site transients update plugins to make sure that you know it's only checking to update plugins every so often and not on every page load. Um, and then we have the EWWW um, plugin for image optimization. And that's gonna be something that, uh, um, you know, that's really not super important, like exactly what it does. But the fact of the matter is, is that the plugins will start to dump some of their stuff inside of here rather than creating their own um, uh, table. But sometimes they create their own their own table here. So we can see that um, EWWW uh, has a table that just it uses to uh, keep track of all the images that it has compressed and the, what the results are things like that. Um, so there's going to be a couple places where you might see a plugin dump its information. Uh, we also have things like uh, WP users, which I only have one user inside of here. And this is uh, how to, this is just what a normal user uh, entry looks like with a ID, user login, password, the nice name, the email. So everything that you kind of fill out in a user's profile, you'll get inside of here. And anything that you don't see inside of here will be in user meta. So if you add ACF fields to a user profile, then you're gonna see that inside of the user meta table. 
Um, on top of that, you'll have things like their first and last name, which don't show up in the uh, WP users table. All we get is the user nice name, email, things like that. Whereas kind of that other meta information lives right here along with capabilities. So this is a, another nice thing to kind of get yourself familiar with. The other things we also have is uh, WP terms, which just has the slugs, the names of different taxonomies that exist on the site. Um, meta information about those terms, um, which I'm not using currently. Uh, and then the relationships between um, the posts and the, or, uh, the taxonomies will live inside of WP term uh, or sorry, WP term relationships is where all the relationships are between uh, the uh, objects and their taxonomy IDs. Um, and then WP term taxonomy is just housing all of the taxonomies that exist. So then on top of it, we, I just wanted to quickly show you a couple things that you could, you would normally see um, inside of, I guess we can do comments. I don't have any comments, but just information about the comments that exist on your WordPress site. And they're very close to kind of like how posts are handled where they just have an, uh, or post meta where it's got the comment ID itself and then a uh, comment post ID. So the post which the comment lives with, and then just information about the person who commented, just kind of if they have a user ID, it's gonna show up and what the date was, what kind of uh, browser they were using when they made the comment. And same thing with comment meta, if there is any. Um, I don't typically deal too much with this, these uh, WP comments and comments meta because I use third parties, but um, still worth knowing that it exists in here and it will be there for every WordPress installation. Um, kind of lastly, there's just a couple of tables here that e exist on my site, just that there's, you know, when you install a plugin, all, you'll just kind of have to start getting uh, familiar with what does this plugin do to your database and how are you going to need to interact with it, if at all. Um, looks like NF3 here, I, and I'm taking a wild guess here, is Ninja Forms. Um, so there's different... Uh, uh, forms that you can, uh, or that are stored inside of here, and then information about those forms. And every one of these is going to be different. And that's kind of the, the, the game you kind of have to play with plugins is you can't, I can't sit here and tell you there's a schema for all the plugins that you install on your site. They basically have free reign over your database so they can do whatever they want and put information wherever they want. And Good and bad thing, I guess, um, kind of gives them the freedom to do what's best for their plugin, but maybe they get a little bit greedy sometimes and and, and uh, maybe even do more harm than good. Um, but then on top of that, we also have Yoast SEO and other, other things that uh, um, could uh, come in through here. I think, I don't know what all of these are, but these are all links to something, um, but they're in there. <laughs> Uh, migrations, indexable hierarchy, um, things that are indexable inside of uh, um, your WordPress site, which is just Yoast doing a good job at keeping track of all the things that exist inside of the database. Um, so hopefully you've kind of found this helpful that what's like in there, like this was not meant to dive deep into what everything was. I hope you can understand that this was simply just what the heck is in the database and what's a, so hopefully it kind of just connects a few dots for you. If you guys want to go over like very specifically and have me make like a long form video about this, let me know because that's kind of what I'm trying to test the waters with with this. So if you want to know more about it, leave a comment and uh, I'll make sure to uh, make a, a more in-depth video. Um, I'd also like to thank my patrons for supporting me. Um, we're going to be doing another uh, exclusive video this month, uh, last month. We did a Headless WordPress with Gatsby um, exclusive video. So if you're interested in that, or we also did one on um, how to deploy WordPress using Git. So very fun, kind of more in-depth advanced videos there. So um, if you're interested, there's a link to Patreon in the description. And also last kind of me shilling here is that if you liked this video, if you want to know more about WordPress, I do uh, WordPress videos pretty darn regularly. So um, think about uh, subscribing to the channel if that interests you. 
Um, well, I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one.